Now you may think of a rifle scope as just a body tube holding a bunch of lenses and some turrets, but there's actually another tube that sits inside the body tube that has so many jobs, including flipping your image around so you see it the right way up, holding your reticle, holding the zoom lenses that control your zoom in and out, and physically moving to compensate for a shot every time you dial your turrets. I'm talking about the erector tube, and I have a couple of them right here. In the front, if you have a first focal plane rifle scope, will be the reticle. If you have a second focal plane rifle scope, this will be at the very back of the erector tube in your second focal plane. Moving back, you'll notice a bunch of spiraling slots on the outside of the tube. This is actually your zoom mechanism, and it's quite interesting. When you turn your magnification ring, there's actually a pin that sticks down into a slot on this outer sleeve of the erector tube. And as this outer sleeve turns, it presses these um, guard pins forward and backward, which in turn moves your zoom lenses forward and backward in a very, very controlled manner. The tolerance of each of these components is extremely important. If these slots and the guard pins and the zoom cells are not machined correctly and there's too much play or too little play, then it can affect the location and the orientation of these zoom lenses at any given time. And as we discussed in the first lens video, the position of the lenses is just as important as the actual quality of the lenses themselves. If there's any play between the zoom cells and the guard tube that holds them when they move forward and backward, this can also cause a perceived shift between the reticle and the image. And we test for this on every single scope before we send them out. The rifle scope can be placed in a collimator and the reticle aligned with the reticle on the collimator and we can dial the zoom in and out and see if there's any shift whatsoever on the reticle.